Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another Fallout 4 Mods Weekly, the show where we take a look at some of the really cool and interesting mods that have come out in the past week for Fallout 4. This week we've got a really nice variety of mods, lots of different things to look at, some new armor additions, a nice little utility mod I guess, and some cool new weapons. And of course I have still yet to complete the Fen Sheriff Department. That mod is huge and it's going to take a little while longer so stay tuned for that. Sorry guys, and especially sorry monkey. Now then, moving on to the mods this week, let's go ahead and start off with our first mod, Robot Armor Paints by Shanik the Meme. Now, this seems like a pretty simple mod, but it actually adds quite a lot. This is going to add new paints for the robot armor, specifically the robot armor from the Automatron DLC, including all of its variants and even a few of the helmets included in that DLC. Now, paints seem like a pretty simple thing, but this mod is very, very well done. Not only can you apply any of these at an armor workbench, but also they are added to the mod collections. And for the uninitiated, that is essentially the leveled lists for attachments, meaning it will start spawning out in the world. Anytime you run into a Rust Devil or anybody wearing robot armor, which includes the NPC's travel mod, you may end up with some cool variations in the color as opposed to the regular standard old green. You can change the colors and paints on the Automatron robot, so why not the armor from the same DLC, especially since the armor is made from said robots. Now with all of the wonderful mods like the Capital Wasteland robots and a lot of additions to the Automatron DLC, you see colored robots all the time, so it would make sense that people salvaging these robots for armor would end up with some colored armors here and there, and of course people could just paint them as well. And if you know anything about me and what I like in my game, it's variety, so seeing even more options and more variety of enemies making every single NPC feel different from each other is a huge plus for me. Tons of immersion and honestly this just looks awesome. Now like I said, all of these have a chance of spawning on any piece of robot armor that you see in the world, but you can also craft every single color over at the armor's workbench. Now the colors included in this mod are as follows. We have the standard paint for those of you who do like the default look in the Automatron DLC, but we also have black, brown, crimson camo, desert camo, gray, green, hunter camo, light blue, light gray, marine camo, multicam, navy blue, olive drab, orange, pink, purple, red, snow camo, tan, urban digital, white, winter camo, woodland camo, and yellow, offering a nice mix of not only standard flat paints, but also some camouflage options too, making for a ton of variety in this mod. Altogether, this is another great release by Shanik the Meme, some really awesome new variety for the armors in your game, and more customization options is always really, really cool. Now, if you liked that mod, you're gonna love the next mod, which is Raider Armor Paints by Shanik the Meme. That's right, the exact same thing that we just looked at, but for Raider Armors, but this one is a little bit different. You're going to get a lot of the same patterns that we just showed off, but there are some new ones that are unique to this mod that aren't available in the Robot Armor Paints. Additionally, this is of course going to apply to every single time you see a Raider Armor, which is far more often than the Robot Armor, so you're going to see these a whole lot, especially in the early game as you're fighting Raiders. But what's really, really cool about this particular paint pack is it not only applies to the regular Raider Armor, but also the hardened and buttressed Raider Armors. For those of you who don't know, when you upgrade the Raider Armors enough, they take on a whole new mesh that looks absolutely insane, gigantic, pieces of armor, and all of these now have paints applied to them as well. Typically in the vanilla game, they just show up as a big black hunk of metal, but now there's some really cool popping color to them. My biggest thing with Raiders is I always want them to have as much variety as possible, and thankfully that's pretty easy now since there are a plethora of armor mods for Raiders out there, but even still, whenever you run into the vanilla Raider armor, it always looks the same. Even if you download a retexture, everybody's got the same piece of painted armor. Well now, that is no longer the case. Every Raider is going to look so, so different. Even if you don't have other Raider armor mods and you just install this, everybody is going to have a completely unique set of armor with different colors and combos that is just different from the last Raider, adding a ton of immersion and variety to the NPCs. Now the colors included in this mod are as follows. We of course have a no paint option and then we also have a black bronze which is a cool new inclusion with this particular mod as we do have some different types of metal. We have brown, crimson camo, desert, 
digital camo, gold, which I really love for raiders. As you may have seen in the B-roll, I had a fully decked out gold raider, perfect for a raider boss. We have gray paint, green, hunter camo, light blue, light gray, marine blue camo, multicam, navy blue, olive drab, orange, pink, platinum, purple, red, silver, snow camo, tan, white, winter camo, woodland camo, and yellow. I really, really love the inclusion of different types of metal on top of paints that you can have scattered around the wasteland, offering even more immersion and realism to the types of armor you would find on raiders. It's such a cool idea. So yeah, if you're looking to really change up the way your raiders look and add a ton of variety to the wasteland, pick up the robot armor paints and the raider armor paints as it's going to apply to pretty much every raider you find in game, except of course the Nuka World DLC. Now then, the next mob we're checking out is known as the ACD-37 Drone by Sesco. This mod adds a brand new drone to Fallout 4 that you can call in to aid you in combat, and this thing actually does pack quite a punch. It is based on an iBot design, but has a completely new model sporting some very heavy weapons, and altogether makes for a pretty difficult enemy for your enemies. Interestingly enough, this thing isn't actually a companion or anything like that. It has a mind of its own. As soon as you call it in, it will attack any enemies nearby, but once it's done, it just kind of leaves, and that's why this thing will despawn after 120 seconds. If it didn't despawn, these would just be running all around the wasteland, doing who knows what, and killing every enemy in sight. One really fun thing to do with this though is to call it in in an indoor location and it will essentially go room to room and wipe out every single enemy. Could be fun for a sort of technomancer or scrappy buildy kind of character who does a lot of working on stuff and lets the robot do the fighting for them. Now the way this thing's AI is set up is that it will attack anything that is an enemy to the player, but in the chance that it doesn't detect the particular AI as an enemy, if that NPC will attack the robot, it will attack them in return. And this thing does pack quite a bit of heat considering it does sport a handful of Gauss rifles and not just any Gauss rifles, but ones that shoot multiple projectiles. So essentially Gauss shotguns. Yeah, this thing is pretty crazy. If you want to call this thing in, you actually do so using a newly added flare gun, and the flare gun as well as the ammo can be crafted over at the chemistry station. Once there, simply head over to the utility tab and you will find the addition of the new ACD-37 flare gun as well as the corresponding flares. Now the flare gun itself isn't too expensive, but the flares are as they are going to require all of the materials not only to make the drone, but also the ammo that is needed for it, including a ton of 2mm electron charge packs. Seriously though, this thing is a lot of fun, so if you like just sitting back and letting this robot do all the work, this is definitely a mod I'd recommend trying out. It's definitely a new way to experience combat in Fallout 4, and definitely is quite a cool scene as you're fighting your way through gunners, seeing a drone go through and tear them up as well from the skies. Now the next mob we're checking out actually isn't new at all, it came out back in 2020, but it has recently been updated and boasts a whole bunch of new features and aesthetics, and that is the M84 Gustav Disposable Missile Launcher by the 6th Messenger. This thing is a very interesting take on the missile launcher, allowing you to use a missile launcher that only has one shot. Yeah, it's pretty interesting for the use of a player when the regular missile launcher exists, but this thing will start spawning earlier in the game and offers some unique customization as well, including different types of missiles that you can craft. And once you've actually used this thing, you can take it back to the chemistry station to reload it. It's a very interesting and unique way to play with missile launchers, but one of the cooler aspects of this is that it is added to the leveled list and will spawn on enemies, meaning enemies can pack a one-shot missile launcher and then it'll run out of ammo and they will have to switch to another weapon, rather than them having fat men or regular missile launchers that they can shoot at you with endlessly. Now, I did mention this thing does come with some different ammo types, which is pretty cool, including high explosive rounds, napalm rounds, cryo rounds, plasma rounds, anti-tank rounds, all kinds of really, really cool options that you may have seen before in other six messenger mods. Now, to give a quick demonstration of how this actually works in game, if we head into our inventory, we will see we have three of these M84 Gustav, one with anti-tank rounds, one as a high explosive, and one with napalm. Let's go ahead and grab the high explosive. And as you see, when we fire this thing, it drops on the ground. It's done, one time use, but you can pick it up. As you can see, it is marked empty and we can take that over to a chemistry station and reload it. 
While you're at their chemistry station, you can also craft yourself a settings holotape where you can tweak various settings with this mod, including one of the most important features in my opinion, whether or not the weapon actually drops on the ground. You can have it just go back into your inventory, so you don't have to run around picking up all of your empty M84 Gustavs. Now then, that is going to bring us to the last mod this week, which is the AEP-7 Laser Pistol by Shimsham and Cadaver. We actually did check this mod out earlier in the week with a full breakdown, but in case you missed that, this is going to be the newest entry in the Fallout 4 New Vegas project, adding back the classic AEP-7 Laser Pistol. Pistol. As you know, in Fallout 4, we have a very modular laser system based on the classic laser rifle design, but it can be modified into a laser pistol. Well, now we have the standalone pistol that is and only will be a pistol. Don't get me wrong, the modular weapon system in Fallout 4 is kinda cool, but it does eliminate some of the really cool classic designs like the plasma pistol and this very laser pistol, but now we get to experience it once again with beautiful new models and textures as well as custom animations, bringing back the classic reload as well as the small energy cells because this mod does feature munitions. Now if you don't want munitions, there is a separate patch, but with munitions you are going to get that classic small energy cell for the really really cool reload. Additionally, unlike the classic laser pistol, this thing comes with a ton of modifications, including full auto fire, some focusers, as well as a handful of classic unique versions from the past games, including the wonderful Pew Pew, which in this mod does have its own custom model and texture and even offers some unique projectiles and its own unique attachments. Now, if you want to get your hands on the laser pistol, it is actually added to the leveled list and can be found anywhere that you could find a vanilla laser pistol. As far as the uniques go, they are scattered all around the Commonwealth, but most notably Pew Pew can be found over at Scrap Palace. Altogether, this makes for a wonderful recreation of the classic laser pistol design and has me very excited for future releases from the Fallout 4 New Vegas team. This definitely is a really nice one to have and it's so awesome they gave it to us standalone so that we can play with it now. With that though, if you guys want to try out any of these mods, they'll all be linked down in the description below and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to drop a rating, it really helps out the channel and consider subscribing if you haven't already for more videos just like this. Big shout out to all of my patrons for supporting every single video. And of course, a very special thank you to Avian4, Captain Chaos, Freedom, Glasma, Helljumper, Indecisive Wolf, Jackie Noid, Kid Hades, Cushy, Logan Rigmaiden, Microhan, Moonlit Gamer, Oscar, Scott, Sterling, Steven, Timmy76, YouthRC, and Voider for joining that tier 3 Patreon membership. If you'd like to support the channel over on Patreon, you can do so using the link down in the description, but it is completely optional. Thanks again for watching guys, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace!